Right, in the last video, we did a simple for loop, adding up the numbers 1 through 10. I'm going to make it a little bit more complicated in this video. We'll have two different sums. Uh, let's start with int sum equals 0, and int sum 2 equals 0. So in the first for loop, we are going to add up the num odd numbers 1 through 1,000. So int i equals 0. We can actually start that at i equals 1. Actually, uh, starting at i equals 0 for what I want to do would not work. Int i equals 1, well, i is less than 1,001. Or it could actually just do 1,000 in this case because it'll stop at 999 anyways. And we want to increment i by 2 each time plus equal 2. Uh, there's three different ways we could do that. We could um i equals i plus 2, but I'm just going to get with this way. It's one less character to write. So, uh, sum plus equal, sum plus equal i. So, let's do a little print statement here. The sum of all odd numbers 1 through 1000 is. And eh, let's not do the colon there. I don't like how that looks. So if I run that, that will give me the sum of all odd numbers, 1 through 1,000, 250,000, looks like. Yeah, 250,000. Wasn't sure if I had the zeros right. Let's do something a little bit more complicated. We have our sum 2. Let's do a for loop. Let's add up only the numbers that are divisible by 3 and 5. So for int i equals 0, well, i is less than 1,000. Let's go 1,001 here, because it will actually reach 1,000. Uh, that's very important. Well, i is less than 1,001. i plus equal 2. We need to start i at 1, because we're going to increment by 2 each time, so it'll reach all the odd numbers, 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9. It'll reach the numbers ending with 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9. And then let's actually get into the for loop. So there is a better way to see if they are divisible, or if a number is divisible by something, but we haven't learned that yet. I'm going to try not to jump ahead. So what we do is int a equals, and let me start to, and yeah, I'll just create them in here. And uh, just for, uh, it has to do with memory and how the computer is working inside. Uh, ignore the reasoning behind me doing this, it'll just run a tad bit faster. So, uh, let's see, A equals, we'll set that to i divided by 3, so we're going to change the value of a each time, and b equals i divided by 5. So if a times 3 equals i, this is doing a check for the remainder, because if you remember with, uh, with integer division, 7 divided by 5 would just be 1. It doesn't do anything with the remainder, it just gets rid of it. So this is checking to see if there's a remainder or not. This basically says, hey, if there's no remainder, when if it's divided by 3, uh, do this function. Sum 2 plus equals i. And it will not get into this if statement to do this unless there is no remainder when i is divided by 3. So if, then we'll do basically the same thing here. b times 5 equals i. Sum 2 plus equal i. For int i. And then we'll print out sum 2 is out. Alright, we'll run this real quick. It should be approximately one quarter of the other number. 
thousand divided by two, that would be uh, one hundred twenty-five thousand. This is kind of close to there, so that's about what we would expect. Anyways, I do hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope this helped you gain a better understanding of how for loops work. If you have trouble with this part right here, uh, don't worry about it too much. You'll learn a better way to do it later on. Just know that, that is saying, A, if this is divisible by 3 or 5, then it's going to add that in. Uh, there is a like button down below. If you hit it, it turns a really neat color. If you want to know what that color is, you'll have to hit the like button. I guess you could also do the same with the dislike button, but I'd rather you not hit that one. Anyways, hope these videos are helping you. If you want me to do any specific video, please let me know and I'll do that for you. Thanks for watching.